everybody. Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about the P365XL and why this may end up being my preferred gym carry pistol and what that actually means. But before we get into talking about this pistol, we kind of have to go back in time a little bit and talk about its little brother, the P365 that I purchased back in May of 2018. Now, I do realize that the P365 has had some controversy with its release in the beginning of 2018, had issues with strikers breaking, had issues with striker drags, spring issues, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, around May of 2018, SIG was able to get this kind of back on track and get it into a good reliable pistol. This has got about, I would say, eight to 900 rounds through it, and I've had no problems whatsoever. It's been one of the more accurate pistols that I've had, um, especially with how small it is. As you can see in my hand, this is a pretty small pistol, but yet, for some reason, this has been really, really accurate, allowing me to hit an 18 inch gong at about 50 to 60 yards pretty consistently. I wouldn't say every single time, I wouldn't say that, but I would say that I'm far more consistent with this small little pistol than I have with some other ones, some more expensive pistols to say the least. In addition to that, I've been carrying it with this Wolf Hollow Tactical holster, and it's a simple holster, uh, but it does have this really nice ulti clip right here that allows me to put it into the waistband of my you know, sweats or gym shorts or whatever. In addition to that, um, if I needed to go uh, a little bit more formal and the clothes that I'm wearing is like slacks or something like that, this holster also allows me to tuck my shirt as well. So I really have liked this holster. Uh, if you guys are interested in Wolf Hollow Tactical, I'll have a link to them down in the description below. They've got some really interesting designs on their holsters. So if you're interested in checking them out, by all means do so. But with that being said, this has been my gym carry for the last few years, since May of 2018, like I said, and I've really, really enjoyed it. But there is one major issue that I have noticed in myself. Uh, I am getting older, and while my eyesight is still 2020, I am starting to see a uh, increase in time of my eyes focusing from far distances to near distances, right? So as I'm drawing my pistol and I'm looking at my target and then I transition to my front sight and I'm focusing on my front sight, that time between focusing on something far away to something near has slowly started to increase over the last few years. And I'm really starting to catch hold of that here in the last, I would say, probably 12 to 18 months. So I've been looking at pistols that have the ability to add an optic to it or an optic ready version of the pistol. Before we get into any more of the video, I do need to take a second to talk to the YouTube manual reviewer because I know that the moment that I upload this video, it's automatically going to get uh, limited ads on it. And uh, you know, to be frankly honest with you, ads help fund this channel but I will need to address the manual YouTube reviewer and let them know that this red dot right here is meant to be on this pistol. I have not modified this pistol. It is supposed to look like this. So there you have it. There's no modifications on this pistol. So now that we have that out of the way, that's one of the main reasons why I have been looking at this pistol is because of the ability to accept a red dot. I have the Holosun 407K on here and um, I have found that red dots are allowing me to be able to pull my pistol from my holster and place it on target and I don't need to focus on the red dot, I can focus on the target and basically put the thing on the thing and pull the thing, right? So I can do that a lot quicker instead of transitioning my focus from the target to my front sight, adding that much time and then trying to put a round down range. Uh, so that is one of the major reasons why I'm moving away from the P365 and moving towards the P365XL. Now, 
What is different about the XL from its little brother? Well, that is in its name, the X and the L. For those of you that may not know, any type of X designation on a pistol will indicate that it has a longer pistol grip or a longer frame as far as uh, the grip goes. So this, as you can see, is a lot, lot larger than the P365. You can see I've got a lot more of my hand hanging off of that pistol there. And while that hasn't been necessarily uncomfortable, I can tell a difference in the different types of pistols that I normally carry. So this is a lot more comfortable in my hand. Still has that really nice grip texture that the P365 has, so that's something I really did like as well. In addition to that, the L also indicates that this is the long slide version, so you're going to have about an added inch to the barrel length on this pistol. Uh, so that should translate into it being a little bit more accurate. Now, there is a third version of the P365, and that's called the P365X. Basically, it is going to be the same pistol, only with the slide ending right at the end of the frame, very much like the P365. So the P365X is going to have that longer frame to fill your hand a little bit more. All right, so you can see in some of the close-up pictures, all of the controls are basically going to be in the same spot. Uh, your magazine release is exactly where I would expect it to be. Uh, your slide catch, slide release, slide whatever you want to call it, doesn't really matter, is in the same spot. And then your takedown lever is also in the exact same spot as well. It does have a rail, but that is going to be a SIG proprietary rail system. And that's kind of a detractor because I know there's a lot of people who really like the TLR7. Uh, and a lot of people have been adding that light to their EDC pistol. Um, so I do know that there's adapters that you can purchase for this. And that's something I may be looking to as well. But Realistically, this is just a little bit larger size version of the P365 and one of the reasons why I've kind of gravitated to it as well. Uh, with my first initial impressions, I only got a few hundred rounds through this, but uh, my first initial impressions is that it's a pretty decent pistol. Uh, the accuracy on this, I was able to see that it was a little bit more accurate than I was expecting because of that longer barrel and with the red dot as well. As I was sighting it in with my defensive ammunition of choice, which is spear gold dot, I have found that the uh, last five of six rounds landed right in the bullseye ring at 25 yards, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. So very happy with it from that point. However, two major issues that I have with this pistol is um, number one is even though this is a longer slide version of the P365, I found that this was a little bit more flippy than the original P365 for some weird reason. What I mean by that is that there's a lot of muzzle flip in this, as you can kind of see in some of the B-roll, and you'll notice that I'm readjusting my grip to make sure that I'm really hammering down, really vicing that pistol into my grip to ensure that I'm able to mitigate recoil. And that's something that I was kind of surprised by. I was a little taken by, um, but that is going to be something pretty inherent with these smaller sized pistols. The other thing is the trigger. Not a fan of the trigger, but there is some good stuff. There's, there's some good news from the trigger, but I will say that this trigger uh, is a bit different from the original in the fact that obviously number one it is going to be a flat face trigger but i will also say that there is a lot of creep in this trigger it's almost like a rolling break and that is something that i'm not a big fan of as you can see right here my finger just keeps on rolling 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 and then it finally breaks over here's your reset right back out there so a little bit longer than what i'm used to and then roll, 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 and it finally breaks over again. One more time. As you can see, my finger really starts to roll through that, and then it finally just kind of breaks over. It doesn't roll, stop, and then break over like some Glocks do. 
this one just continues to roll and then it finally breaks over. Now, why is that kind of a good thing? Well, what I found as, this, as I was zeroing my red dot with my personal defense ammunition, I found that as I drew up my pistol and got my red dot on target and started to squeeze that trigger, it finally just kind of went off. And it surprised me each and every single time that I pulled the trigger, I was surprised as to when that pistol finally went off. And that's a technique that I was taught when I was in the military that as you're zeroing your rifle, you should have a nice consistent squeeze on that trigger. And then when the rifle, when I was zeroing my rifle, when it would go off, it should surprise you. And that should get you into the best form as possible, making sure that you keep your sights on target exactly where you want them. And that worked for me in the military. And it seems that as I was zeroing my red dot, it worked for me there as well. So I kind of have a love hate relationship with this, uh, with this trigger. Um, just in comparison real quick, we'll look at the P365. This one, here's your take up. And then it kind of has a little bit of a creep to it and then finally breaks over. The trigger on this is quite different. There's your reset, a lot more audible and tactile. And then it finally breaks over on that. So I prefer the trigger on this compared to the 365 XL, but the fact that this is optics ready is a major plus and I will kind of fight through my concerns with the trigger for now. With that being said, uh, this pistol will be compared against the Glock 48 MOS. I do have one of those in my possession right now and I'm going to make a determination as to which pistol is going to be the go-to as far as the Jim Carrey pistol that I will have moving forward. With that being said, I like to hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. What do you think about the P365XL? Is it right for you? Do you think that there's a better pistol on the market? Um, let me know. Sound off in the comment section down below. I would really appreciate it. That's really going to do it this time. My initial look at the P365XL with a few hundred rounds down range. So far so good, but again, I do have some concerns with uh, my ability to mitigate recoil and that trigger. Uh, it's kind of shaky right there, but more information will be out here soon as I get a little bit more rounds through it and then compare it to the Glock 48 MOS as well. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. Thanks so much. We will catch you next time. As always, here comes a high five, freedom through strength. Take care guys, see you later.